Hi, I'm John Almerode, and as a former math and science teacher, I got up every morning looking for the best way to set up my classroom that would result in student learning, the best student learning possible for all of the students in my classroom. While you may not be a science teacher and may not teach mathematics, odds are you and I have very similar questions in the classroom. What really does work best in moving learning forward? This question prompted John Hattie over 25 years ago to dive into educational research and look for the answer, what works best in our schools and classrooms. What resulted was a collection of meta-analyses, a database of educational research that's built from over 1,800 meta-analyses, over 100,000 studies, including over 300 million students that generated a list of 320 influences on student learning. Why is this so important? What's the benefit of having that type of information at our fingertips? I want you to think back to the last school day where you were in person with your learners. There's a lot happening. There's the drop off, the pick up, there's the hustle and bustle of the day, there's lunch, there's our planning blocks, there's a lot happening. And so we often don't have time to dig through the body of literature on what we should be doing in our classrooms to promote student learning. The Visible Learning Database does just this. It uses meta-analyses. So what is a meta-analysis? A meta-analysis is a study of studies. Take, for example, this pile of information. Let's say that every book, every article, every journal in this pile was about homework. Should we give homework to students? Should we not give homework to students? What type of homework should we give to students? Should we grade it? Should we not grade it? Do we involve parents or families in the homework task or the homework assignment? You wouldn't have to go far into this pile to find contradictory findings. One study says homework's great. Another study turns around and says it's not so good. Some studies say we should involve parents and families. Other studies say it should be the student. What about the grading question? You will likely find one that says grading is good and turn right around and find one that says grading is bad. It creates a lot of confusion for us. While there's nothing inherently wrong with the study per se, it, it does make it difficult for us as teachers in the limited amount of time we have to go through and find the studies we need to inform our decisions in our classrooms. What a meta-analysis does is it takes all of the evidence, puts it together, and then provides an overview or an average of what the research says right now about a particular influence. The example we've been talking about is homework, but there are other things. For example, phonics instruction versus whole language. What about one-to-one -one laptops? What about the use of clickers? Right now you may be asking about distance learning education or web-based learning. Those influences all have a body of research behind them or associated with them. The meta-analysis allows me to take a wide-angle view of that particular influence and then use my own professional expertise to decide how to not just identify that influence but then implement it in the classroom. When working with a meta-analysis, one of the questions you may have is, well, how do you take a group of studies and look at them all together and average them out? Isn't that comparing apples and oranges? It's a good question. Meta-analyses calculate something known as an effect size. An effect size, well, to be quite blunt, is a way to take apples and oranges and compare them using something called a standard deviation. So here's how it works. We take the findings from one study and the findings from another study and we use a formula to calculate the effect size. Now there are lots of different ways to calculate an effect size. The Visible Learning Database uses a Cohen's D to calculate effect size. And in a way it takes away the units and so the units of comparison are no longer relevant. It does it in standard deviations. So I'm no longer comparing apples and oranges. I'm neither comparing apples nor oranges, but I'm looking at growth through standard deviations. The Visible Learning Database is right at our fingertips. Uh, www.visiblelearningmetax.com When you visit that site, you have access 
to the 320 influences and the meta-analyses that helped build that database, which means you can go and check this out on your own. One of John Hattie's goals is to make all of this information publicly available. Here's the data. Let's see what it tells us about what we do in our schools and classrooms. What we do know, though, is that the biggest message from the Visible Learning Database and the Visible Learning Research in general, learning occurs best when teachers see that learning through the eyes of their students and students see themselves as their own teachers. That's the key behind Visible Learning. How do we not just use interventions, approaches, and strategies on our learners, but help build their capacity and their skills to take ownership of their learning so they can do it on their own? Do learners know what to do when they don't know what to do and you're no longer their teacher? That should be our aim. That should be our focus. And that's the story behind the visible learning work.